I just thought I'd try and get a quick video in for you before Christmas. Um, and uh, haven't had a chance to do part three of multi-power yet. So I thought we'd have a quick walk around of the 590 so I can show you some of its features and um, give you an idea of why I bought it. Okay, if you can uh, cast your mind back to about 1982, um, I was working on a farm in Berkshire and the first tractor that was allocated to me as a my tractor as a driver was one of these. It was a 590 Turbo with an Opico or Opico Turbo kit on it. It was a four wheel drive, but unlike this one, it was the two door red top cab and it had the PAVT cast wheels on the back. But still, ever since then, really, I thought, well, I'd like a 590 Turbo. I'd like a four-wheel drive. I'd like a red top, and I'd like one with cast wheels. And I looked, and I couldn't find one. Not one that I really wanted. But then this came up. And as you will have seen on Lord Muck's channel, this one came up in an auction with a brake in the manifold, exhaust manifold there, broken off. So I waited for the auction to run its course, didn't meet the reserve, so I got on to the auctioneer and put in a slightly cheeky bid. And uh, next thing I knew, it's mine. Did take a bit of a gamble with this um, exhaust manifold because so um, it was broken there actually not there if it had been broken there it would have been a bit more of a problem because that part leading up to the turbo is not easy to find but this part I was able to source direct from Perkins for oh, 39 pounds so I was happy with that got it back here got that fitted and uh, Yep, now it's got a fully functioning turbo and the equally beautiful turbo whistle. Say, so it's not the one I particularly wanted. I did want the uh, red top cab, but the silver top had this, or the early versions of the silver top, was the one door versions of the silver top, had this particular axle on it, which is great for taking out gate posts. It wasn't the best axle that Massey ever came up with. In fact, in many ways, it was uh, not particularly good at all. Um, however, it was. It didn't have a locking diff. Um, had a very poor turning circle. But at the time, you didn't really have many alternatives. Um, if you wanted a four-wheel drive machine, that was all you could get. So it's ticked two of the boxes. It's four-wheel drive and it's got a turbo, which is great. It's, when you look at the paintwork here, it's not actually that bad. Most of the panels are pretty straight. It's got that lovely factory stainless exhaust makes it sound so good um, it's uh, got a little bit of rust in the usual places that you'd expect to find on a 500 so the bottom of the mud guards have gone there's a little bit there this side isn't too bad and it's got the original plow lamp on it it's actually got the lower half of the back window is unusual for these because people used to sit on them and break them it's uh, gone there and it's going a bit down there but that's nothing that's not fixable um, 
got the pickup hitch. But it's also got an assister ram on it, which uh, increased the lift capacity by about, I don't know, somebody I'm sure will tell me I'm wrong, but it was, if I'm out of memory, I think it was 250 kilograms or something like that, which might not sound much by modern standards, but in 1983, or actually this was 1979, I think, um, it was, uh, that was a lot. Obviously, it's got the wet brakes to it, which you can tell. Um, those little scallops there indicate that it's got wet brakes. Um, all the frame and the axles and the engine are flint grey, indicating that it was made in France. Um, but it's complete. It's not been knocked around. There's nothing in here that really scares me when it comes to uh, work that needs to be done. This mudguard has gone through, but again, that isn't a particularly difficult job. Um, let's get some light on the subject. Okay. Um, engine is relatively clean, it's not leaking oil and it's not breathing particularly. Um, it's had a new starter, but it's got the um, external oil filter for the turbo. And uh, the bracket that holds the uh, Oil cooler for the turbo is broken off, but that's not the end of the world. Inside here, it's relatively clean. Um, it has all the appearance of a one owner, one driver machine. In the cab here, looking at the around the seat uh, and the insulation there and the floor mats, it really doesn't look like it's had that hard a life. It's got two spools, which is uh, a bonus. I was quite pleased about that. But the seat, I've seen many worse seats than that. Um, independent PTO, so I'm sure the reason there's a PTO guard on the outside is to hide the fact that that is going around all the time. But again, that doesn't really worry me. It's got the uh, diverter valve here, which is, is appears to be stuck, but that isn't that's something I can free off. Diff lock pedal is stuck, but then they always were within a few days of coming out of the factory. And getting up in here, just everything about it gives the appearance that it has been looked after and it's not knocked about. Even the lights work. I know the temperature gauge, as somebody pointed out in another video, the temperature gauge appears to be stuck, but yeah, that's no big problem. The power meter and the um, rev counter has actually broken since I've had it, so that's not a problem. Uh, it's still got the cigarette lighter, which is unusual. Um, it's the multi-power version. Yep, everything about it is pretty genuine. So as the um, hour meter was running when I got it, it shows 6,300 hours. And looking at the one remaining pedal runner, that doesn't look out of the way. The foot throttle stuck. Again, not a big problem. I will probably end up taking the cab off to do some work, some repair work on the cab. But that thing is there. Often they disappeared, got lost. Um, it's got the tinted glass. It has had a new door at some point and someone's put a welded the wrong 
the later two door red top style door handle on it but again there's nothing here that really scares me okay let's see if it'll start hasn't been run for a couple of weeks now so let's see how it goes about that with turbos of this generation it's a good idea to let them idle for 10 20 seconds or so before you uh, start to work them I don't know if you can hear that lovely whistle that comes out of it Before you shut it down, it's always best to let it idle for a couple of seconds, 10, 15 seconds. I mean, there's a fair amount of white smoke coming out of it, but I know what's causing that. If you look here, you can see there is something dripping out of the inlet manifold and that is coming from a faulty valve on the start heater. Problem with those things, it is quite a common problem with these engines. Um, it's an excess fuel and a manifold heater. So when the engine's running it tops up a little reservoir from the leak off pipe on top of the injectors and when it's full when that little reservoir is full it just goes back to the tank but when you need to operate this you turn the key round into the start position it opens the valve um, allows diesel to fall out onto a hot element which uh, is supposed to help start the engine and most of the time it does problem with these though is that the valve in them, especially in these cheap ones, cheap replica ones that you get, um, the Chinesium ones, they, the valve isn't that great. The valve seat wears out and they start to leak all the time. When they leak all the time they allow the cold start reservoir to drain into the inlet manifold and they make a lot of white smoke and become quite difficult to start even when they're hot. So that's one little job I'll be doing over the next few days. I'm putting a new one of those in. Um, I've got a box down here of filters and a few other odds and ends. I've got some track rod ends which I could put in. Um, and I'll change the oil. Power steering, we have got a leak Surprise, surprise, he's got a power steering leak. Never heard that one before. So I just topped that up with ATF before, so I can get this moving, move around, and uh, do some stuff with it. But um, yeah, I'll have a look and see where, where the leak is, and I'll get that fixed. The only real major problem is, that if you look at that front wheel, it leans in at the top. And that side too. What that generally means is the bearing and the bush in there have gone. Um, happened quite a lot with them. And again, not something I'm particularly worried about. A lot of the parts for these are still available from people like Vapormatic and from AgriLine and QTP and all those people. And surprisingly enough, a lot of parts are still available from Agco, which uh, is a bit of a testament to how long these things last. Anyway, 
I think that'll do for now, but thanks for uh, looking in. Thanks for joining me, and um, you probably noticed that inexplicably my channel has grown enormously over the last month or so. Um, so thank you all my new subscribers for joining. As always, when you get a wider audience, you do get a few special ones who um, like to point out my mistakes. And yeah, I make mistakes. I'm no different. Um, but when you're pointing out my mistakes, bear in mind, I'm doing this from memory. I'm not sitting there with a operator's manual in my hand looking up statistics to, to point out that I'm wrong. So, yep, I'll get things wrong from time to time. Of course, there's a few other special ones as well who've joined us, and uh, your ride will be along to collect you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.